Hey guys, this is William and welcome to this 10th video where we're going to be looking at if statements. So if statements with accompanying conditions. Now what is an if statement? Uh, if statements are simply a way to create branching actions within your game. You know, at its core, it's a statement that, that, that has a different end result depending on the conditions that it's checking. It's a way for you to, to say, if this, then have this happen or have this happen. Okay. In the example here, and the example we'll work with is we'll be looking at a fish tank object, uh, right here, this fish tank object. When my character looks at it, the, f my character will have one response. When we look at it again, my character will have a more in depth response. Uh, so it's not the same response every time you look at it. Uh, the, the character's looked at it, he sees something more in detail when we look at it a second time, so he says something different. Uh, so if we look at an example here, this is how it will look in Visionaire. It's a simplified representation. So, if already looked at object equals false, which means I have not yet looked at it. Okay, if that's the case, then the character says, hey, it's a fish tank. If looked at object is true, which means we have already looked at it, then the character says that fish tank has a crack in it. Okay, that's a, a very simple representation of what we're trying to do. Now, this is all one thing. This is one statement, right, that we want to aim for. So what we'll do is instead of putting all of that there, we will say else. Okay, so if already looked at object is false, then the character says this, else, i.e., that is true here, then the character says this. Okay, so that is the general idea of how we work with this. Now, this has many applications in games, uh, in a point and click adventure games, uh, and it's got a wide range of possibilities regarding puzzles. Um, let's say you've got an object that you need to push. Um, and you push it once and it doesn't open, but you push it again, then it opens, you know. So that there's a lot of stuff that we need to, uh, that you can apply this in. Uh, so let's look at our if statement and how it actually needs to be built. We have our fish tank object and what we're going to do is when we look at it, then we will have a specific narration or the specific, the specific display text appear. So I'm going to add a new action here and call it look so when we look at it what do we want to have happen now always 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 tie this back to what we saw right there okay very important that's what we're going to try and replicate so we will add a new if statement i will click here and i will click on the conditions if statement option and i will choose if condition because if you look at our, our object here in blue, this is a condition that's being checked. We, we can look at an object several times, but if we don't tell Visionaire that we've already looked at it, there's no way for Visionaire to know and no way to display the second part, the second text, the second narration part. Uh, so that's what this is. This is a condition that we have, which also means we need to create this condition. It's not created yet because we need to keep track of what we've looked at and, or, and what we've not looked at. So right now, if you look at the action part I added, it, it's got if condition empty is true. Okay, so a few things here. We can change it here. But first, we need to create our condition because it's not created. So I will go to my conditions page and I will click on the plus to create a new one and I will just copy this text over call it already looked at object. Now this should be false right because this says already looked at object. When the scene loads we haven't looked at any objects so this cannot be true. Okay, this cannot be true because we haven't. When the scene loads, we haven't looked at anything. So the, the default needs to be false. Now, our condition has been created. Now go back here and now we say, if condition what is true? If condition already looked at object, which is the fish tank, uh, we need to choose it here. We need to click on this browse link button and choose already looked at object. Now, 
if condition already looked at object is true or false is false okay because we haven't looked at it so here we need to set it to false so if the condition already looked at option is false then what needs to happen we will say hey it's a fish tank okay so we will go over and add a new action part here and we will choose display text so now my character if that condition is false it's the character will say hey it's a fish tank good so now what do we need to do we've done this now we need to add an else statement so if this does not apply right what do we need to do if if this is true then what okay so i'm going to click there and i'm going to go if conditions and choose else and then the next one here is another uh, narrative part that we need to say so it is simply adding a new display text and then adding in the text now very important this is very important to remember when we deal with if statements we need to tell visionaire when an if statement should end or when it has ended and we do this by adding a new action part called end if so i'll click on conditions and i'll choose end if this is vitally important always 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 remember to add this at the end of your if statement okay so this this looks good this is this is what we want there's still one little bit one, one little thing missing that that'll cause this not to work but but that's fine we'll add it in a bit i just want to show you the general idea here and how this results in the game so i'm going to run my game and i am going to look at this fish tank and my character will say hey it's a fish tank now I'll click on it again and my character will say hey it's a fish tank but that's wrong okay it should have said this when i looked at it the second time and uh, the reason for this is simple. Uh, we never actually change this value to true. So it's always false. So it always only does this part of it. So what we need to do is we need to change this condition because if I've looked at an object, it's not false anymore. If I've looked at the fish tank, already looked at needs to be true. So to do this, simply add a new new action part called change condition and instead of browsing to it like this i'm just going to click on this little browse button and just drag and you can see i can drag it to the condition to any condition that's already on screen so i'm going to choose that so now it's going to set it to true and this will then be displayed okay so if this condition is false meaning i haven't looked at anything then this will uh, show and my condition will change to true the next time I looked at it it this will not apply because this value is not false anymore it's true and so it'll skip the three lines and it'll continue from here okay and that'll happen every time I look at it so let's run our scene and take a look I'm going to look at my object hey it's a fish tank I'm going to look at it again that fish tank has a crack in it. I'm going to look at it again. That fish tank has a crack in it. Fantastic. This is exactly what we want. So uh, this this uh, if statement is working. When I add anything, any action part, I can actually move where this fits in the list. So I can do, do anything uh, like that by selecting it and then clicking these arrows. Okay. And where things are put matters i cannot move this change condition to there because the logic doesn't make sense right it it, it um uh, the logic it activates it from top to the bottom so it's very important how it's structured you cannot just add everything anywhere and hope it works you need to logically think about it and apply it in that sense adding this within that section makes sense i cannot put it anywhere else but if you, for instance, wanted to change a condition and it put it there, but it needs to be somewhere else, just use these arrows to move it about. Okay. So there's a lot more here that we can unpack and we will unpack in the next videos. 
uh, items like else if, um, multiple conditions, multiple if conditions, because if I have, if I'm checking this, but I want to check something else as well, I can add a second if condition in here. So there's, there's a lot of permutations of this functionality, which we'll get into. But, um, I think challenge yourself in how you can apply this because this is very much a, a, a logical thought process that you need to go through. See, uh, create a puzzle that you want to do, uh, and see how it applies, uh, in game, uh, using if and conditions. Cause this is a very powerful, um, a part of the program and a lot of what you'll do, uh, will be based around this. Right guys. So I'll see you in the next video.